Hey guys, we're at IBC 2018. We've now made our way to the Black Magic stand. I'm here with Stuart, and we're here to talk about probably one of the most exciting announcements of IBC this year. And it's not even something physical that we can really look at. It's software based. Can you tell us about Black Magic Raw? Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, I guess it. Raw as a, as a concept, Raw as a format, is something that everyone really associates with acquisition. Um, and that's because what you're trying to do is you're trying to obtain as much information from the sensor of, of the camera as possible. So that's usually contained within a 12-bit file. Um, that allows you to have full manipulation over that over that file through metadata, through various settings, and where all of the longitude is within the imagery. So. The difficulty with that is that because it's generally a 12-bit file and because it holds so much information, um, what you then end up with is a quite large file size. So we started to kind of look at this maybe sort of two and a half years ago and think to ourselves, well, how can we, how can we use that raw file but actually not just have it as an acquisition format but also use it as an editing format, um, use it for the whole post workflow so that you minimise that requirement to transcode and minimise that requirement to sort of optimise that media. So we came up with Blackmagic Raw and that's what we've announced at the show um, and we feel like it's, you know, it's, it's a really interesting step forward with, with Codex um, because what you've got in, in essence is that you've got a raw file there that is all the quality you would expect of raw but at a fraction of the size yeah. and that is where it starts to become you know really intriguing because because people are saying well how do you do that I mean how are you taking a 12-bit file and making it so so smaller in size um, and and that's because what we're doing is we're harnessing the the actual processing within the within the camera itself yeah so to start with the Ursa Mini Pro 4.6 um, will be the first camera that you'll be able to use Blackmagic Roar on um, and what's happening there is that we're taking what is called the demosaic process and we're actually moving that partially into the camera so the camera is actually processing that raw file internally and then when that raw file actually then comes out of the camera half the work has already been done and that now means that when you're taking that into your post environment you're minimizing the requirement to throw loads of gpu power and then cpu power at that file um, and also because you've actually reduced that file significantly in size it means that you can just work with that in a normal editing editing way yeah so does that mean uh, because obviously you've got your video assist external monitors does that mean because this is obviously doing a bit of that processing that we're not going to see black magic raw on those recorders so so this is a real the start of a really a really exciting journey for us because the, the, the first step is that we need to get it into the camera to process it and then then get that kind of working with the with the raw workflow. Um, one of the things that we've actually done is we've made the SDK available um, online so that other software vendors can actually implement Blackmagic Raw decoding into their their applications. For us, we've got a whole breadth of products that potentially in the future could benefit from it. But really, right now, the starting point is is our Ursa Mini Pro 4.6. We'll then look at the Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. We've already committed that, that it will be in Pocket Happen. Cinema Camera 4K. Okay. And then from there on, who knows? I mean, you know, we're, we're, we're kind of hopeful that this really, really does take off. And so, just as a comparison, we obviously had ProRes Raw fairly recently. How does this compare with ProRes Raw then, for example? So, I mean, there's, there's lots and lots of differences out there in terms of codecs and lots of different things in the way people utilize codecs. I think that what you find is it's really about the right codec for the right job yeah. um, and also as well what you're finding is that there are certain scenarios where you may use one type of codec over another because you need the quality sometimes you might need the file size I think that ProRes RAW is a fantastic codec and something that you know is, is, is Apple have um, you know really done a great job on um, I think one of the things that we've looked at is you know is, is ways in which we can because we manufacture cameras yeah. how we can actually utilize our cameras to process Blackmagic RAW so that we obviously eliminate some of that size and storage issue. Yeah. Um, I think that what you've then also got to look at is that the the fact that we're um, completely platform independent in that you know we're harnessing um, OpenCL, we're harnessing CUDA and Metal. So you know whether or not you're on a Windows, Linux, or a Mac platform, you know you can effectively utilise Blackmagic Raw. So 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 for us, it's about trying to spread that out and it's not about replacing it's about another option really yeah and how did tell me about the, the sort of 
the post-production side once you get it onto your edit suite, because I've seen on the map behind you that there are two files for, for each shot. Can you just give us a bit of an explanation how that works? Yeah, so, so when you actually record that file, I suppose the first thing to say is that um, it's not like Cinema DNG was where it's individual frames. Yeah. It's actually an enclosed file. So it's like a typical video file. It looks like a typical video file. Yeah. But what you get with that is something called a dot .sidecar file. Now, that dot .sidecar basically holds all of the metadata, all the information relevant to that clip. So if you actually right-click on that clip and you open that in text edit, what you actually see is all of the information, all the color science information. Yeah. We're using brand new Color Science 4, which is something we've been working on quite quite, quite intensely within Blackmagic. Um, and that also holds information like ISO settings, exposure settings. Um, what that means is that whatever adjustments you make to that, um, to that file in a, in a post-production environment, it adjusts the information in the sidecar file, but it doesn't necessarily affect the original raw file, yeah. which means you're always retaining that original file. But it also means that if you wanted to, you could actually open up that file in text edit and actually edit it in edit, text edit. Edit your raw footage by text edit. <laughs> Absolutely. So it gives you an element of, of coding to that process as well. Yeah. It also means as well that if you've got multiple people who are sharing that raw file, you can actually send somebody this sidecar file and it would automatically effectively link back into that original raw file. Um, but once you actually get it into Resolve and Resolve at the moment until other software applications take, take it on board, Resolve is the only application at the moment that it would operate in. Um, but what that would do is that that would give you the functionality to go in and make some of those adjustments. Yeah. We've just announced Resolve 15.1, which is a major update to support Blackmagic Raw. Um, if you go into the, um, the color page, there's an icon on there for our camera. If you select that, you then get all of the access to the information and all that metadata that you can then adjust. So it becomes very easy to manipulate. And obviously the hope would be, is it is it now that that SDK is available to every other software vendor, that they would go and do similar things within their applications. So do we not have a, a fixed date as to when Adobe Premiere and Final Cut Pro will be able to work with Blackmagic Raw? Do we have that yet? So so we only made the announcement yesterday. <laughs> yeah. You know, typical kind of Blackmagic fashion. We try and keep things sort of very quiet until the last minute. Yeah. And um, really, nobody, was el nobody else was really aware we were doing this. Um, so, you know, already in the last 24, 48 hours, we've had a number of other manufacturers come to us and say right we need to have a look at this um, and that's you know that's great because at the end of the day from our perspective it's about giving users accessibility to something that might enhance their workflow and we've got many 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 different camera customers that might not necessarily use resolve um, and you know we want to give them the benefit of acquiring with our cameras and utilizing their their preferred software, yeah. um, you know, to which to which you utilize that Blackmagic Raw. So it's in our interest to make sure that everybody has has access to it. Yeah. And just sticking on the users, when can they expect to be using Blackmagic Raw? Then obviously it was announced yesterday. When can they shoot with it? Well, it's beta now, so you can go to the website now. You can actually download it now. You can actually install that into your Ursa Mini Pro 4.6 and start working with that. Obviously, as I said, further cameras will come yeah. down, down the line. Um, there are test files as well on, on, online, which people can go and have a look at yeah. and have a play with in Resolve. Um, so the answer is right now. Perfect, Stuart. Thank you very much. Yeah, no problem. Thank you.